you talk about taking on a more leadership role coming into this season? Have you seen any of those qualities during this offseason? I think there's a comfort level that's there now. I mean, he, he hadn't had an offseason prior to this, so to be around, everything slowed down. Having figured out um, that he can play at a high level, I think he has um, the confidence to be a leader. And I think as he grows and continues to become more and more of a professional, um, that will only get better. You mentioned his voice a little bit being vocal, and you know, whether it's calling somebody out or defending himself in certain situations, have you seen that? Definitely on the field. Yeah, he's high energy. He's competitive. You know, that's the one thing about Isaiah is, is when he's on that field, he wants to win. He wants to compete at the highest level, and we all know he has the athleticism to do it. And, and it's been, like I said, not having an offseason his first two years wasn't easy because you make a lot of progress during that time. But um, we like where he's headed and excited to see how he um, plays in training camp. We talked a lot about, um, well, he, he brought up some instances where he's even said some things about J.J. Watt, like, trying to get J.J. Watt to do something different or play hard or whatever. And I'm curious, as a former player and as a coach, what is that accountability like within a locker room? Whether it's, I mean, it takes some guts if you're 23 and you're saying something to J.J. Watt, but how important is it that? Yeah, I still don't say anything to J.J. Watt, so <laughs> I have yet to hear anybody. So that's news to me. <clears throat> to Tom Brady? Um, not in the football facility, but. <laughs> After a few tequilas, yeah. It's about the only way. How crucial is that accountability, though, within the locker room, player to player? Yeah, I think it's huge. I think that when you look across the league, the teams that are successful year in, year out, have that type of dynamic and have that type of locker room. And, um, you know, I felt like last year when we were rolling, everybody was healthy. JJ was playing, Hop was playing. We had some of that going on. And uh, I think it's progressed with this offseason. So it's when that uh, locker room kind of monitors itself, it goes a long way. You mentioned many times about the off-season program in the last two years. Now that it's almost over, what are, what are the overall positives that you've seen just having everybody together and being able to get the work done in a normal atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, schematically for us coaches, like I've talked about, to be able to put it out there, get it on film, see what works, what doesn't, after you've done all your self-scout from the previous year and you want to try some new things, that, that's it's huge to do that before training camp. So training camp, you're not experimenting. You're, you're putting in the stuff you know you want to run. And, and that, to me, from a coach's standpoint, is huge. And then for the young players, seen some great development from guys. Eno Benjamin's been tremendous. Uh, another guy who never had an offseason. And, and he's out there and um, you know looks like he could be a, a starting running back. So I think for the young guys who haven't had one, it's been a real blessing. It's a lot, yeah. I like to try and get it all on, on tape. Um, so we'll install a bunch of new stuff just so we can see how we like it, if the quarterbacks like it. Uh, but, but during like February, March, April, I'm doing a lot of studying college offenses, NFL offenses, trying to figure out things that we can add. And so previously, we didn't have this time to do what we were doing in training camp. So to be able to get a lot of it uh, worked out right now has been, been big. Yeah, I'd say probably fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all quarterback based usually. Um, they like it. We'll keep it because they usually make it work. Did you like Rodney Hudson was out there today? Just wanted to get your uh, update or status on him right now. Yeah, no update. Um, we're working through something with him. As soon as we know, we'll, we'll have that update. Excused or um, not excused? Can you say anything more about it? I can't. Not right now. Who else uh, was here? Uh, I believe that's it. Zach Allen, Zach Allen was here, still rehabbing. Yep. So. Hopkins looked good in, in the stretching park, running and everything. How far along is he? And what are your observations? He, he's close. You know, we're, we're being really um, cautious, obviously, with him not playing the first six weeks. And that's been our biggest thing, putting together a plan um, through training camp, through the next four weeks that, doesn't build him up and ramp him up like he's about to play week one. So we have a good plan, um, but he looks great. He's excited. I know he's frustrated he can't play the first six, but like I've said before, I think we'll get the best version of him those last 11, and um, it'll be fun to watch. You mentioned that with the offseason program, guys can catch your eye. You've mentioned you know, two or three times in the last couple of weeks. Is there any other player that has caught your eye so far, the young guys? Yeah, I think you know Rondell is a guy who – He's going to play a lot more. He's going to play more of Christian Kirk's role. And just watching the more reps he's gotten and how he's gotten comfortable with being able to play him inside and outside, he's a guy that's taking real strides this offseason as well, the more reps he's gotten. Look to have your quarterback and your weapons out there that you, know, you guys 
guys are kind of brought in and just together what it, what it looked like? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a work in progress, but we got a lot of that you know, skill offensively. It's going to be me um, getting screamed at every Sunday for not getting the ball to him enough. So I'm mentally preparing for that. I'm going to go on like a Buddhist retreat um, the next four weeks. But it's uh, it's exciting. I mean, I know what we can we can be. Uh, a lot of work that goes into it. But to have all those skill guys that we brought in out there today was fun to, fun to see. First day of new Tyler's out there, do you see like everybody's level rise in a way? Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, I mean, he's he's the leader of this franchise. You know, we're about to make him, um, like, I'm sure, the highest paid player in this franchise history. And, and so he understands what comes with that. And, and the guys know what he can be at his best. And, and anytime um, we can get the whole band out there, um, things pick up. When do you expect that contract to be done? I'm praying before training camp. <laughs> I just want him there day one of training camp. I'm not sure that'd be a Kyler question, but I, I just personally, I'm being selfish here, would love for him to be there first day of training camp. Do you plan on staying in contact with him between now and the start of training camp? I always do. Yeah, I always do. We don't talk about, we don't talk about contract. It's just football stuff or Oklahoma softball. You know, that was a big topic. <clears throat> Did y'all watch them play? That was like unfair. You said you don't want to rank him up like he's going to be playing week one. So what does that look like in starting training camp? Do you just do you hold him out for a little bit longer? Yeah, I think, yeah, we're going to be really um, smart. Uh, which days he practices, practice a couple days, you know, minimize his reps, so make sure he gets some feel on the field, full speed stuff. And then a couple days he'll work out. So we're trying to come up with a great plan that, that rolls right up to week seven of the season and make sure we're smart about it. But the main thing I don't want him to do is ramp up, make a bunch of plays in training camp, do this, practice really hard, and then six weeks, he's not doing anything. With Kyler's contract being such a story that's kind of been hovering, what will it mean to eventually get it done? How much are you personally looking forward to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I just try to control what I can control. But I, I think um, Steve, myself, Michael, we all understand what he can be and, and where we want to take this thing with him as our leader. And so I think it'll be great energy for this entire organization when, when that's wrapped up. Williams and his he, he's coming along. You know, he, he's doing everything he can. I think it'll be um, into training camp when we kind of see where, where he stands. But um, we're not going to rush him either. Was the, you talk about all the work that got done. Did that go into cutting back, you know, the one day of mini camp and making it two instead of three? It did, yeah. That's traditionally what we've done. Um, we had the normal schedule as much as you could have, and so we just cut that last day off. What, who are you working at center right now? Uh, I know Sean Harlow has been there. Who else do you have that there right now? Yeah, we have um, Lasitas, who we drafted this year, and then Pew has been sliding in there and playing some as well. What do you like about Justin? Going into his 10th year, he's had every inch we've known to man, I think. And he slogs through it, and he seems like a valuable kind of guy, what, what, what sort of things do you admire about? Yeah, he is a tremendous um, football mind, first and foremost. I, th I thought last year he had one of the best years of his career. He was healthy for the most part. He's battled through injuries, but I gained the most respect for him. We were playing Tampa. No, I think we were playing San Fran. That first year we were here with San Fran, they had everybody rushing, Bosa and D Ford and I forgot who else. Um, and our tackle got hurt, and we had to play him at tackle, which he hadn't played in forever. So we had to go against like Bosa all game, and then the next week Tampa Bay was Shaq Barrett the whole game. And he didn't blink, you know, and that's not exactly what you want to be doing if you're him. But ever since then, um, I've had such a great respect for him and great leader, great professional. And like I said, I think he's playing some of his best football right now. How do you describe his personality? Um, East Coast ish. He did. He did. Yeah. I didn't know if he knew what that was or knew any of the songs, but he acted like he did. No, he, he's he's fun. I mean, he'll call you on your stuff. He'll check you on your stuff. So um, you got to be be careful when you're around him. You've always talked about wanting to get the guys on the field, how, how important that is because you can scheme as much as you want. How nice was it to see Kyler and Hollywood connecting on passes to your benefit for change instead of Yeah, <clears throat> I've seen it the other way. There's no doubt. He, um, the, It's going to be a good relationship there. Just um, the way they, they work out together throughout the offseason, there's already that 
uh, bond. And then I think once we get to training camp and Hollywood gets comfortable in our system and isn't thinking as much, I think it's really going to take off. But they definitely, you can tell, they have a connection. He's been good, really sharp, uh, really good athlete, great body control, good hands. I mean, once we get pads on, obviously there's going to be an uptick in, in physicality than he's used to and, and speed of the game. But uh, he's been everything you want as far as studying it, knowing it, and working hard. Cliff, what does this next month look like for you going into training camp? I mean, are you sitting down there starting to write things out already, or do you have to force yourself to kind of mentally think? Yeah, I'm, I'm gone. I will be out of the country, unreachable for any of y'all. So. Yeah, I, I get away um, for about three weeks, and then we'll get in and start really finalizing scripts for training camp and putting it all together and then um, get it rolling. Are you thinking about the cut down to 53-man roster at this point in the offseason, or is that more of a training camp? More of a training camp, yeah. I think right now we're trying to finalize what pieces we're going to bring in, um, what position groups we feel like we need to improve upon before we actually get a training camp. We know that we can't be specific about Rodney, but is there – a level of concern that you won't, the team won't be able to work out whatever's going on? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we're still working through it. Um, and as soon as we have an update, we'll let you know. In terms of Isaiah Simmons, only kind of, the last one, if you don't mind. Okay. In terms of Isaiah Simmons entering his third year, bigger workload, um, things of that nature, how much have you seen him grow in the leadership role and how crucial will that be for him to continue to grow into that as the season progresses? I, I think to become what he wants to be, which is, you know, the all pro, pro bowl type player and, and maximize his talent I think that's really the next big step for him and to be that guy you got to do everything right all the time and you got to have great work ethic and, and understand the system inside and out uh, and I think he understands where he has to get to to have that type of credibility on, on the field.